What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Welcome to the Schmodown Rundown, the official after show for the Movie Trivia Schmodown. I am your host, Brad Gilmore, and I'm joined all the way from Chicago, Illinois, not in Los Angeles, California, no more. <laughs> he has returned home. The prodigal son is back. Frank That's right, yeah. Janish. Yeah, I'm back, and uh, it's, been, it's been an adjustment period. I think that jet lag really hit me, hit me hard. So uh, it's good to be back. In the yeah, we're things. both in Central Time. Yeah. So yeah. so it it is. It's a it's a it's a real slap in the face when you get off the plane. If you spend more than two days there, it's a big slap in the face on the West Coast. Yeah, I, I've been k- trying to catch. I think I've just barely caught up on sleep now. So <laughs> hopefully, I stay awake for the majority of the show. Well, let's hope so, Frank, because <laughs> what a hell of a week it was in the movie trivia showdown. Uh, a few things to get to. First off, I want to thank Dale the Dude and Taylor Robinson for joining us. And Patrick, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, Campbell for coming <laughs> on the show last week yeah. and uh, and really kicking it with us. Uh, you know, Patrick's got to get his locks changed, but it was a hell of a fun time, wasn't it, Frank? Oh, that was that was a lot of fun, and it very very much had like a – you know, like you said, a, a, like a talk show feel, bringing people in and out. That was really yeah. fun, um, and they were great about it. And uh, uh, yeah, I would love to do like more of that kind of stuff. You know, that that'd be fun. I have one question for you before we get into the news from from this week. My yeah. question is this: Do we or do we not release the blooper video? That's my oh, question. Well, well, Chris Clark, the producer extraordinaire for this show uh he did send me the blooper reel i have uh, it as well and it is it is quite entertaining yeah 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 uh it will be put out there it's definitely that like the first little part will will <laughs> definitely be put out there you know what i'm talking about uh i mean but the second part i'm i'm not even gonna get into it i'm not even gonna get yeah. into it because i'm gonna end up <laughs> breaking down again but uh why don't y'all yeah. comment if y'all want to see the blooper reel if we get like if we get 10 or no 15 comments Saying we want to see the blooper. Is that too okay. low? I think it's a little too low. All right, 25. There you go. There you go. 25, 25 comments from of you separate all. Separate people, not the same Sep- person. Not the same person. Don't be <laughs> sneaky, internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know you could be sneaky, but if we get 25 comments on this video on YouTube, on the SK Plus YouTube page, uh, we will release the blooper reel. But anyway, they're, they're let's get into the. the uh, <laughs> I'm I'm looking forward to it. Please do it. Do and it. Don't make do 25 like bot accounts that just. <laughs> Well, you know what? If you go would. through all that work, you almost deserve it. Um, I, okay, fair enough, fair enough. But let's let's talk about so, uh, a quick bit of news before we get to the matches day. We got a big special guest scheduled to join us on the show. She is Rachel the Crusher Cushing is going to join us on. Who, by the way, phenomenal appearance on Movie Talk on Friday. Uh, just throwing that out there. Was that Thursday? I think it was Thursday. Friday. Th- Friday. 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 It was Friday. Okay. Yeah, phenomenal appearance by uh, Rachel Cushing yeah. on movie talk but let's get into it let's talk about the one big news item that dropped this week and that would be the schedule uh for the upcoming schedule for the next what six, uh eight weeks something like that uh quite a while six eight weeks why don't you uh do you have it in front of you frank janish yeah well it goes only up to uh, just a free for all on april 13th um so, so for the next was, four weeks so we well, well we knew that the live matches were going to be put up on collider this coming week ahead on Tuesday, the Wild Berries and Real Rejects. And then on Friday, you got Roca and JTE. But then the week after that, we weren't really sure what was going to happen. Um, but now it looks like we're going to get on April 3rd. It's going to be Trek making their long-awaited debut this season. They're going up against World's Finest, who they previously took down of the Kingsmen. And then April 6th, you have the Inner Geekdom number one contender match between Mark Donica and Jared Haven. And then also as an undercard, you're going to have the Stacey Howard RB3 match. Now, that, that Stacey Howard RB3 match is also the Patreon match, which is going to um, 
be posted on the Patreon page on March 3rd at the same day the JTE Roca live match is going to be posted on Collider. So if you're a patron, uh, look out on March 30th. They're going to have two matches that day, JTE Roca live match and then the Stacey Howard RB3 match. And then April 10th, we have probably one of the most anticipated matches thus far uh, this season, this early in the season. It's going to be above the line versus Modoc. And then after that, that's just that's just a warm-up for you until we get to April 13th, the free-for-all. So, Brad, there we go. There's the slate for the next few weeks. What do you think? Man, I'm excited for a lot of these matches. RB3, Stacey Howard, that's very interesting to me because we've seen what Stacey Howard can do when she took down yeah. Mark Ellis in the tournament last season. I mean, that was a shocker, and I think she's done really well on that singles trajectory that she's on. Try to say that five times fast. <laughs> but when you go to something like MODOK, above the line. I mean, these are two heavy hitters going at it. This is like, you know, the Christmas Day game between the Warriors and the Rockets or the Warriors and the Cavs. I mean, this is a yeah. big deal. And then I think the one that I'm actually really excited for is to see Team Trek versus World's Finest. I only got two words for you, Frank Janish. You can finish it. Cameron Diaz! You... I don't. I. I feel don't, bad yeah, don't saying it. You know what? Yeah, because she's a you, lovely person. Know. Yeah, she's exactly. a lovely person. And you now know, she's, she's retired gonna, from acting. Yeah. So. Yeah. She's. Is she? She's yeah. Retired? I, mean, there was a, I think so. There was a. There's an article I saw her headline. So. Well, you yeah. know what? I mean, she made her mark. But and Cameron Diaz will be coming into play when we talk about the Rachel Cushing match uh, <laughs> or the Shire Wolves match later yes. on. <laughs> I want to throw it to yeah, our yeah. grand producer. Mr. Christopher Clark. Uh, Chris Clark, you saw this uh, schedule. Frank just ran it down for you. What matches are you looking forward to the most? Well, I will say above the line versus Modoc, we've won it since top 10 uh, versus action. We've won it. We've always felt that Modoc deserved kind of that title shot kind of thing. And I feel like having yeah. them versus above the line, which is, who are objectively the second best team in the league pretty much, is going to just be pretty much, uh, 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 you can't predict that. I also am very curious about the whole uh, Stacey Howard versus uh, um, RB3 match. I, I feel like they are two very, very evenly matched people. And the fact of the matter is, I just feel like I am just so excited for free-for-all. Free-for-all is going to be amazing. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be interesting to see if free-for-all does in fact live up to last year's free for all and if anything new and surprising happens it's just the the rest of this slate is is ingloriously awesome no pun intended with above the line <laughs> but you also have to look at trek versus world's finest world's finest had a pretty solid debut and trek is a no i would say so yeah, yeah. and trek i i would say they fumbled a lot but maybe recently but you know what maybe trek can actually get a step up and kind of get more mo momentum this year with the with with that match so you know what this slate looks fantastic and i cannot wait for the future let me throw it to you frank frank you read down the list but what what matches are you looking forward to out of that slate right there i i'm really looking forward to the trek world's finest because trek they've been they've been on the downswing since their title match against the Patriots, and we all know how that went. World's Finest, I thought they had a really good debut against the Kingsmen. I was especially impressed by Eric Zipper, um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do in a second showing, And along with Winston. I think uh, they're, they're deceptively good, um, but this this match here is a stepping stone for World's Finest. If they win, yeah. they're 2-0, and oh, and they get another match after that, uh, they're looking at a, a potential title shot. And then for Trek, this is to help them get back on track. Uh, and Trek on track? Uh, Trek on track. Trek on track. On Karma track on Kramer? Track. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they desperately need this win. If they don't, uh, I, I, I don't even know what happens here for Trek. But free for all, uh, you know, Clark mentioned, you know, is it, Chris Clark mentioned, is it going to possibly live up to what happened last year. I've been of the mindset, no. And not that it's going to be bad. I just don't think you're going to see um, a Mark Andreco situation again. I think that's just like one of those one in a million type of things that's going to happen. I do think, you know, we will see multiplayer exits, things like that. But four people, I don't know, man. That's just a crazy set of circumstances. They have to all fall into place for that to happen um, like it did for Andreco. 
especially with the kind of table that he was at, for one. I mean, I just don't know if you're ever going to replicate that. Um, but I'm more than willing to find out, and I'm looking forward to the free-for-all. There's, there's what, 48 competitors now? Uh, there's a lot. And, and, yeah. That's what we know. So there's like 10 or 12 more than last year. So, wow. Um, wow. Let's see what happens, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to the free-for-all. It's going to be a blast. Yeah, I think the free-for-all to uh, quote the great Booker T. Huffman is going to be good. Uh, but with that <laughs> being said, I, I think uh, let's waste no time. Let's waste no time. Stat man, Chris Clark. Let's, stat boy. Let's g- stat boy, I'm sorry. Stat boy. Boy. Shillmore, stat, stat boy. Stat uh, boy. Let's, let's waste no more time. Let's get our guest on the show right now. I mean, she dominated last season. She was the rookie of the year. We still think that she is going to capture singles goal this week and after this or this season and after this week. Who knows? She might have those tag belts around her waist with her new team. Let's get her on. Rachel the Crusher Cushing. Rachel Cushing joins us right now here on the Schmodown Rundown. Rachel, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me on. It was uh, quite the week for uh, the Fife Club and the Shire Wolves, so I'm happy to be here to talk about it. It was definitely quite the week, and you know there was uh, may have been a little bit of controversy there too. You know, you never know. What's the schmo down without controversy? We love it all. Um, but t- talk to us here. I mean, it's great to have you on the show. Um, talk to us so far. I mean about your season thus far. You, I mean, you came in that triple threat match, and then you have your championship match. This is already your third match this season. Uh, you're already rank it, uh, racking up W's and, and all that. So talk talk to me about, let's first talk about the triple threat match. How did you feel going into that thing? Um, I felt really good going into that, uh, mostly because I had had a decent break. I know that it was tough for the fans to go with such a drought, but as players I had played so much in the fall because of the tournaments and the inner geekdom and everything that um I sort of got a little on the burnt out side and so I was excited to have some time off to sort of like watch movies for movies and not you know consider mm-hmm. them for every possible question that could be asked <laughs> about them and um and you know and just take a step back and then you know once January hit I was like kind of revving myself up thinking you know JTE and Mike like you know what I th- I think I can take these guys and, and you know, and, and going through through my studying and, and, and whatnot. And so I have to say the day of, I felt good. I mean, never sure, because there's so many factors involved in the day of, but uh, I was as ready as I could be. And, uh, and it turned out to be a, a good day for me. Oh, yeah, it turned out to be a great day for you. Uh, but I want to hit on something real quick you just brought up, though. How hard is it to turn your brain off when you're watching movies now? It's really hard. Um, it, it's yeah. for it, it, it's a game and it's for fun, but this thing seriously like sinks its teeth into you and sort of takes over your life um, in a lot of ways. And last year was a very eye-opening experience for me. And I've always watched movies and I've always paid attention to detail in movies, but um, but it's hard not to watch them now and think to myself, okay. Who's the director? Who starred in it? Where does it take place? Like, what are like the really standout quotes? You know, what are the MacGuffins? You know, things like that. And and every once in a while, I'll catch myself and I'll just be like, okay, stop. You love movies. Take the movie in for what it is, um, and and you know, and and enjoy it. Um, so it's it's a little bit of a balancing act now. So after uh, the triple threat match, you had that uh, championship match with Sam Levine. You didn't get the title yet. We all were waiting for you to be crowned and anointed the champion. Uh, how did you feel after that match? That was a tough night because, like you said, there was so much expectation placed on my shoulders. And I will admit, you know, as soon as it ended, my first thought was I just let so many people down, and including myself. And that was very hard to, to deal with kind of in an emotional way. Um, luckily, you know, I was surrounded by friends and, and to look at how I played objectively, I didn't lose because of a lack of knowledge of trivia. Like I played a really, really great game. I just 
you know, wasn't maybe ready for round four and, and Sam thinks so fast and his trigger finger is the best in the game. <laughs> and I just, I wasn't ready for that. And, and that was made abundantly clear. So, um, you know, it, it was, it's, been a little tough to get over but I can also hold my head high in terms of how I played and you know hopefully at some point you know I play in a lot of leagues and I have a life outside of this so I don't know when I'll next get back into the singles ring but but I will so well I I, we're waiting trust me Rachel we are waiting because we know one day that singles championship will be around your waist now now Frank you were just as excited as I was I said take my money now whenever uh, uh, Clark Wolf walked into that room and we saw that Shire Wolves were a thing. Um, talk to me, Rachel, though, about Shire Wolves. Where, where, where did the idea come from? Who approached you? Was this a Christian thought? Was this something that y'all cooked up together? What, 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 was, the, what was the history behind the Shire Wolves? It's funny because when now that it's happened and we've played together and we've been getting to know each other and, and, and all of this stuff, like, it just sort of seemed like, of course, right? <laughs> like everybody has just yeah. been like, yeah, Makes like yeah. Clark, you know, is was my favorite player when I was just a viewer and a friend of Christian's who would watch matches. She was, you know, that first rookie of the year. She was the first female player to play for a belt. And, and then, you know, she was an inspiration. And then for her to be the one to get me into the league and everything else, you know, there's just, there's been so much history that I'll, that it just sort of made sense. Um, Christian, of course, you know, was all about it. You know, he's, he's so focused on diversifying the league and, and getting more women to play and getting more people of color to play. And he's been my biggest fan and person who has pushed me and been there for me when it's been up and down. And, you know, so he said, you know, this, of course, and even Ken was like, of course. And everybody was like, yeah, no, okay, yeah. This this yeah. just makes sense. And once, yeah. you know, we met and we discussed it, just the two of us over lunch one day, um, we, we just, at the end of the lunch, we were both like, yeah, of course. Like, this, this was kind <laughs> of meant to be. And it, after playing together for the first time, we're even more sure of that because yeah. we just, we complement each other in so many ways. We're similar in a lot of ways. We're different in the right ways. And, um, and we settle each other, which is something we both need sometimes. And our strengths are the exact balance, um, strengths and weaknesses. There's just everything about it. And that put a ton of pressure on us for that first match. Like we were not convinced we were going to go there in there and KO them. Like everybody seemed to think that we were going to, we were very much focused on just answer one question at a time, play the game play the, uh, the version of the game we wanted to play. Um, Clark wanted to very specifically play an aggressive game, and that made sense given the situation we were in, so that's what we did. Um, so once it all ended, yeah, I know, you know we didn't KO them. We didn't even take TKO them, but we played r- really good given the circumstances we were in, and we're really proud of that match, and we're so excited. The fans, for the most part, seem to really have loved it. I mean... It's Christian said it's one of the the, the most watched matches in the shortest yeah. amount of time in a long time. So you know everything about it feels great, and we're really excited about whoever we take on next. Real quick on on the views, I was just looking through the matches, and the last time I looked, it said one hundred forty thousand, and I was like, wait a minute, this is this YouTube is this YouTube? Yeah, I was like, are they going to take away yeah. these views in YouTube's like two been days? screwing us on our number, too. <laughs> yeah. no, I get it. And I was just ecstatic to see that number because I really don't pay that much attention to the views. That's not my department. Um, so uh, I was – but I was thrilled to see that number, and I think that just goes to show uh, the star power that all four of you really have, I think, because Dagnino is a personality. Ken is beloved, and obviously you and the, as the Shire Wolves with Clark – uh, as a team up everyone's wanted to see for a while since the breakups uh, from of previous teams. So I was really glad to see that number, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing just how well uh, it continues on. Well, hey, Frank, yeah. I want to throw it to you here. When you heard, though, Shire Wolves making their debut against the Lions, did no less, <laughs> but Ken Napsock and Bobby Gucci. What were you thinking about th- their chances? Because, you know, Tom Dagnito kind of gets a bad rap. Uh, when it comes yeah. to well, not just his off, uh, you know, out out of the ring antics, but more so his play. But we've seen him actually do 
fairly well sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, if he, if he gets the right line of questioning, uh, he did come in second at uh, the the uh, uh, spectacular in that match. He lost to Emma Fife, yeah. but it was down to those two. And then we saw him almost beat Josh McCougar. A lot of almost, I know. Mm-hmm. But did you think this was a formidable team for the Shire Wolves? I, I thought it was definitely kind of a, a thorn in the side for, for Rachel and <laughs> and Clark. Uh, nothing that uh, I thought they should be too worried about. But, you know, Rachel's right. Like, this wasn't ever going to be, uh, or you should never th- thought this was going to be a TKO or a KO. Because if you remember... And people were, were commenting about this, about when the Mega Powers went up against uh, the Patriots, the first match. That was a completely different format where the teams got to go twice in the second round, if I remember correctly. So the ability to rack up points was much easier in that format. And they changed the rules after that match because uh, matches weren't going to be as entertaining or close. Uh, and so what you see now is a format that allows a much more competitive game. So really anybody kind of has a shot on any given day to take another team down or take another uh, singles opponent down. So I wasn't surprised that it wasn't a KO just because we hardly ever see those. So I'm not saying that, you know, just because even like above the line, uh, uh, they don't have a KO and you would think they would. They're this great team, right? Sure, a TKO I could have saw, but when a team like, as we'll get into, the Lions then got a strength in the second round, it can carry you and help avoid getting a TKO. So I wasn't surprised, and Ken is deceptively good, so is uh, Tom, and if you just look at their past performances like you were rattling off, Brad, about especially Dagnino, and look a little bit closer at Ken, uh, you can see that it was still going to be a... It was never going to be a blowout, so it was going to be a decent match all the way through, so um, it wasn't... Nothing too surprising, but a little here and there. We'll get into some of that stuff. Well, let's talk about Rachel. Let's talk about the entrances here. Let's just get into the match because <laughs> Clark Wolf, uh, when she was with Mark Riley, Wolves of Steel, they were known for a lot of great entrances, right? Uh, definitely Rachel Cushing has been known for a lot of great entrances as of late. Uh, definitely setting the bar high. Uh, I, I believe William Bibiani made reference to that uh, when we when we had him on the show. Y'all came out, and it was so spot on, like the exact right thing to do. Uh, you came out dressed as, you know, a league of their own, uh, which is a movie I've, I've watched again not too long ago. So when you came out, I was like, this is just so right. This is the perfect <laughs> tone. Uh, How did y'all come up with a league of their own for the two of you? Um, I'm actually going to shout out my sister, um, oh. Sarah, came up with the idea. She is an Uber, Uber, yep, Uber Showdown fan. She's very active in the Facebook groups. Yeah. Um, I do have to call her out, though, because I am not her favorite player. Roker is. And, <laughs> and I, I, that's just, that's wrong, Sarah. I, I just have to say that. Um, but you did have a fantastic idea. She texted me one day and said, you and Clark should do the peaches. And I was like, I mean, I adore that movie it's very iconic very memorable very easily recognizable um and there are a lot of layers there uh with our story and it was really easy to find the costumes surprisingly um and and yeah and we just borrowed some bats and we talked to emma and emma borrowed some gear from uh, cody decker a jen sturger's husband and the whole thing just came together in this perfect way um but yeah i i agree brad it 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 felt so right as soon as we heard that we were like yeah that that's our debut entrance for sure some things just make too much sense and that was one of them it was just it just made so much sense frank i know you popped for it oh yeah that was i mean when you when you say the title of the movie in your head a league of their own and here come rachel and clark and what I guess that kind of symbolizes and represents for this season. It just makes a lot of sense to me, just like the pairing of Rachel and Clark. Everything is just making too much sense. Um, (laughs) It's great, and I love it. Well, I guess let's get into uh, round number one here. Uh, Round number one ended with the Shire Wolves with a total amount of points with 14, Lions Den with 9, let me throw it to Frank first. Frank, what was your analysis of this first round? Um, very excited. Not too surprised at what the numbers that Rachel and Clark put up. 
Uh, not too surprised. Really what the Lions Den, Lions Den did either. I was a little surprised, though, and I know, Rachel, I think I've seen you comment on this about the Road Warrior question. You didn't go the JTE rule. Um, you basically had a perfect round, more or less. Had you used that? Yeah. Yeah, that's... Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and uh, 14 points is the tie for the second most points from a debuting team in the first round. And I went back and I just saw Clark in her last three matches with the Wolves of Wolves of Steel. She answers 7 out of 8 her past three matches. Does another 7 out of 8 here. I mean, she's on a roll. And then you have Rachel, who put up a perfect uh, first round in the triple thread and has been amazing the first round throughout. So to see 14 points, um, that that's tough to overcome for a lot of teams. And then you have Lions Den with 9, which is you know, uh, can put up six and it's, yeah. as long as you can get to, I always say, as long as you get the double digits in the first round, even nine, you know, um, 10 points, you're going to put yourself in position to be competitive for the rest of the match, especially as someone that puts up 14 points. Not a lot of people, not a lot of teams do that. So it was impressive, uh, to see that happen. And, um, we were off to a good start. Yeah. Yeah, Dagnino didn't really come through in round number one, but I would love to see the Lego movie with George Clooney. <laughs> uh, Rachel Cushing, what, what 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 did you think going into that first round when you saw um you know man fourteen points? This is this this is the team that I thought it would be. Is that what you were kind of thinking? Definitely, and it and it's it's just it's a confidence builder. I've said that before. I've said that you know every question you get right makes it easier to get the next question right because it is a mental battle out there and you look at people who get two or three questions wrong in a row it just i mean yeah there's a handful of players the dan merles of the world where they just brush that kind of stuff off it's but it's not so easy so what it said to me aside from just feeling really comfortable on how we were doing was the whole fact that we were all able that we were both able to do that and feel confident in ourselves and in each other and um yeah it just it felt amazing to to be able to to do that but you know i i do want to i do want to ask uh, oh, oh look at that look at, look at we guy. have a special appearance yeah. here on the show i, oh, right. I don't know <laughs> if, if i do this the, the sound might be a little worse we hear you no. Okay, there you go. I can hear you now. Look at look. You know, he looks like what's, what's that actor's name? The uh, Parker Parker Lewis. What's, what's his name? It's like not Parker Lewis. I can't remember the the guy's name. He played Parker Lewis back in the day. That's who the top left. Brad, um, what's up? Well, I appreciate it. What's going on, Kamish, or or so, sort of Kamish? How are things going over there? <laughs> it's good. Frank's been talking some smack. Well, yeah. What? That's what Frank does. Frank's a crap talker. Yeah. Well, all right. I know that you guys are going to. I don't want to take away the crusher's time, but I think on on, on Tuesday you'll you'll see it from a live event. Um, the live crowd felt you you know you were there. They felt your sentiment with the respin. So. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah thing, great. I, I you guys talked about it up top because there was a tweet that uh, came in and people were asking about storylines. How storylines had kind of um, you haven't seen them as much this this season, and the reason for that was because we we're building up new competitors, and you are going to see. A lot, a lot of story coming up in the next few months. But I don't want to take away from uh, from Rachel's time. But I just wanted to say what's up. Thank you. Doing a great job. The show's awesome. Kick ass. And uh, uh, Brad, you're in trouble because I think Aaron's going to take it all. See you later. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's that's well, a foregone I don't, conclusion. I don't think <laughs> no one disagrees with you. Yeah. No, yeah, we're no all. No one screwed. disagrees with yeah, you. Yeah. 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 You know, it was even funny. My, I, I was telling my girlfriend about. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do the rundown schmodown, and she goes. Uh, yeah, I think that Aaron guy's going to win. <laughs> she didn't even watch any of it. She just already knew. Thanks just, for your support, yeah, babe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think what I was going to ask you, though, Rachel, was this. Um, you talk about sometimes getting, you know, one, two, maybe three questions wrong in a row. I equate it to a basketball player like James Harden shooting the three, and he keeps bricking the shot. Sometimes you just got to shoot through it. What is your strategy? How do you not let it throw you? And is it just like, I'm just going to keep answering, and I'm going to get back on track? I mean, that, that's the bottom line. The um, the best advice Christian ever told me way back at the beginning was um, uh, take it one question at a time. And it like, no, we have not invented a time machine, so we can't go back in time. We can't change things. So it's it's what's done is done. Focus on what's in front of you. Um, and and I've been able to do that, and I've not been able to do that. So it's it's a work in progress for me personally. Every competitor is a little bit different. Um, 
but I think it just comes down to, you know, you can't beat yourself up if, especially when it's easy to, the easy to moments are the, um, me not being able to pull Hail Caesar in my match yeah. against Sam. I've seen that movie. I know that movie. I knew it was the Coen Brothers movie. I just, in that moment, under the lights and the stress of the that big of a match and everything else, I just couldn't get there. Thankfully, it didn't derail me for the rest of that round. You know, I was able to get back in it and remember questions, and then I had a great round too. So, you know, it was an instance where I, I messed up early, but it did not completely derail my game, which I was proud of that. Well, yeah, no, it, it's something that I, I just always think, you know, with any competitor in any sport, I think it's, it's like you said, it's a, such a mental game. Uh, let's get into round number two, because round number two, you talk about mental game and maybe throwing you for a loop here yeah. a little bit. Y'all elect to go first. That's the first thing I want to ask you. Why go first? It has always been my preferred method. Um, believe me, Sam Levine has lectured me on yeah, uh, yeah. why come, going in second is is the better way to do it. But, um, but he is a, a much less emotional player than I am. And my thing is, the less pressure I feel, the better I play. I'll tell you, the, one of the best games I ever played was against Stacey Howard because I love her to death. And I honestly went into the match thinking, I don't care which one of us wins because a woman goes on to the semifinals. I'm playing my friend. Yes, she was playing a heel and I was doing the face and the storylines. But behind the scenes, we gave each other a huge hug and we went out there and I did not have any pressure on me. And that, lo and behold, like, you know, I played my first perfect first perfect first round and um, I KO'd her. Um, <laughs> so, you know. That's so, what we call a humble brand. <laughs> 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 but it just it goes down to what I'm saying in terms of the the pressure and and I'm guilty of putting the most on myself but I feel it externally too so it just it comes down to that in respect to um being able to uh play the 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 game aspect so in terms of going first or second I don't want to play from behind because I feel the pressure of having, like Sam said, but you know the number you have to hit and knowledge is power. And I'm like, nope, knowledge is pressure. <laughs> is how I look at it. <laughs> Honestly, like knowing yeah. that they're leading by nine or whatever a situation is, that means I have to get X number of questions right. And I know that that helps with going to multiple choice or not, but at the end of the day, I would much rather go first, give it everything I've got, extend my lead as far as I can and let them deal with having to catch up. Um, and Clark was willing to, to, to go with that. In turn, the thing that she really wanted that I, you know, um, had to, to sort of come around to was to, to play aggressively in terms of going to multiple choice or not going to multiple choice. And clearly we didn't in several instances in that round two um, on, a, on a category that neither of us felt great about. But... Um, but her reasoning was absolutely solid. It's, I have a decent guess at the answer. Yeah. We're going to go for the two-pointer. And if we don't get it, it's not like those two are going to get it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. You have to know well, yeah. who you're playing against. Like, that's, she's much better. And, and a, one of the best things about our team, a teaming up, is she, she plays the game. And she has looked at some of her past Wolves of Steel matches and wishes that they had been a little more aggressive in going for the two points rather than going to multiple choice. I mean, if you think about the margin of error in that above the line match that they played, if they had gone for it on one question, things would be very different in the league or very possibly different. So she, you know, given our circumstances, and that's how you have to play every match in our match where we were up by so much, where we got a category we didn't love, but we were playing this particular team, that all culminates in the decision to, let's go for it. If we'd been playing a different team, who if we'd been playing the old school six degrees, you better believe we'd have gotten multiple choice for every <laughs> right, single yeah. one of them. That's how you, but the, that, those are the game playing aspects of this. It's not just about trivia. And, um, and you know, that's how we chose to play. We didn't get a lot of points in round two, but wasn't like they stole them. And, you know, and we had such a lead that we just, you know, that was that was the way we decided to play. 
Well, you know, and that's what I was going to get into. It's funny, and Frank, I was kind of thinking about this when I was watching this match. I was like, you know, they, they made a special point, as they always do, which is awesome. You have, uh, On the Patreon, you can pick a slice on the wheel. And I think we I think we saw it once before already this season, a Patreon slice. I believe once. Maybe. I may be wrong. I think. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Festival Darlings. That, I knew it was one of them. I couldn't think yeah. of what it was. But I, I remember thinking when they said, oh, yeah, we have a Patreon category here, dance movies. I'm like, well, that, you know, maybe that's not the greatest, you know, uh, reward because, you know, what's the chances? What are the chances that someone's going to land on your particular category that you sponsor on there? Well, it goes to show you patrons <laughs> and potential patrons out there. It yeah. can happen. And it, and it, and it happened. Uh, y- y'all spun action adventure, decide to go away from it. And then you go and you get dance movies. I know, uh, I know somewhere you, you were just like, ah, oh, should I have stuck with action adventure there? Is, is that kind of what was going through your mind? A little bit. Um, here's a just inside little tidbit from me. The action adventure category, I wish to God it was two categories. Mm-hmm. I would take adventure every day of the week. I would stay far, far away from action. I, 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 I don't rewatch action movies. I, I've seen a lot of them, but in round two, the questions tend to be pretty in depth, you, you know, kind of questions. And, and have that bank of, you know, having seen Die Hard dozens of times. I've seen it maybe two or three times. And most action movies I've seen once. Um, but action adventure, when you put them both together, I know there's going to be a couple action questions in there. So I have, I've la- I landed on it with um, Ken in the past. And, uh, and I've always wanted to spin away with it. And, and Clark was fine with that decision. It's, it's a what if. It's a, you know, wish you had that time machine. What would it have been like if we had gone with that? We wouldn't have uh, played as aggressively because you know that Tom could, if we True. didn't get something, you know, yeah. the, the likelihood of them stealing would have been much higher on action adventure. So, Absolutely. A- absolutely. And it, but just, you know, that, man, that dance category. But, uh, <laughs> but I, I, I do... I do think it's an interesting point about action adventure being split up. You know, we're seeing it a little bit with horror thriller, horror being its own category before. You know, when you think about it, action adventure is just kind of like this big this big box that, that you know you put a lot of movies into. But maybe splitting them up, man. You know, Kamish was there just a second ago, or sort of Kamish was there. <laughs> you know, it's uh, you know you it's never interesting know. because recently in a round three, they had just a horror category. It wasn't horror thriller like yeah. it is in the first round. Yeah, and exactly, there's a slice too, yeah. So, hey, maybe we're getting closer to splitting up action and, and adventure. I'm still waiting for that Back to the Future category, so I'll, <laughs> I'm not going to hold my breath, though. Um, so, y'all, y'all get uh, okay. You know, you do okay. You end up getting six points um, in that second round there uh, in total. Um, not, not probably what you wanted, but considering it was dance, uh, you know, about the best that anyone could do. Really there. Um, and, and then you saw Lions Den, they get uh, they spin Oscars, which we were pretty sure they were going to <laughs> re-spin after that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I wonder why they did that. I don't know. Uh, but then they get Charlie Sheen, which I was like, of course. This is just right in their wheelhouse. And they end up getting uh, eight points in total. Eight points in yeah. total. I did not see it. I mean, even getting that Machete Kills question correctly – uh, which I remember the trailer for because he wasn't even credited as Charlie Sheen. It was Carlos Estevez. I remember in the trailer playing <laughs> the President of the United States. Uh, you had to been like, of course they get Charlie Sheen, right, Rachel? Absolutely. It's the showdown, guys. This is how it works. This yeah. is when people say luck doesn't play a part. I'm like, I want to smack him upside the head and be like, of <laughs> course it does. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well-rounded players tend to do better because, you know, whatever you land on, you're probably going to do okay in. We literally, I mean, of almost every slice on that wheel, we would have done better in Charlie Sheen movies. We talked about it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> you know, dance movies, just just not our thing. But that happens, and that's part of the game, and you have to roll with it and do the best you can with it. Um, and, and that's exactly what we did. And, and I said it in our post-match interviews, what I liked about it was how we played. And we talked 
every question. We communicated. We we had a strategy. We stuck with it. Um, and and that's you you make the best of the situation you're in. And sometimes it's the worst situation possible, which is you get a weakness, they get a strength, and and now we got a ball game. You know, a close one. So that the, the Schmodown is, was designed with this exact scenario in mind, so that not every match would be a blowout, not every match would be a KO. Um, and and I love and hate the game for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what I mean, they come back, and it, I, I think it was was twenty seventeen, twenty to seventeen, going into round. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know because I I know y'all are such two great players, but when you see it's twenty seventeen. You're like, what the hell is going on here? I mean, is there any kind of fear there? Uh, or not fear, is there any? Is there anything going on in your head like, can they win this? It's, I don't know if we went that far. Oh, go away. You tell the outlaws here. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> Who's there? That, that was the outlaw. outlaw. That, yeah. of course, was the outlaw. Yeah. No, that, that's, a, that's actually your sister's favorite player. Uh, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> It's like, like blood. Like when, blood is supposed to be thicker than anything. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Um, whatever. Um, I, I don't know if, I guess I just don't think that way. Like, like I said, I never went into the match going, oh, we're going to TKO them. So that when we got to that point, I was thinking, oh, we did it. So like, uh uh-oh, you know, they, they're still, I played pretty round, pretty well in round three. Clark has two. Um, and also, you know, in round three, they could pick three categories. They're not good at. At that point, I didn't know what they were going to get for their categories. The worry didn't really kick in until after a certain controversial thing that yeah. I'm sure we're about to talk about. Well, let, let's just do it right now. Yeah. Why not? Uh, you rip know, the Band-Aid uh, off, Brad. <laughs> let's just write off. Uh, 16, 17, and 18, those are the categories that they selected. Number 16 was Cameron Diaz movies. Frank, do you have the exact question in front of you? I don't have the – what was – it was it was essentially Ugh. Willis. Yeah, something to that effect. Something to that effect. And um they uh, Dagnino takes the question first, right? And uh he goes first in this and, and he says Charlie's Angels. Not wrong. Not right, but then uh, uh Christian I believe clarifies and you know uh thinking he says something to the effect of we need you to be be, be yeah. more specific. Yeah, yes. Like, and so he said, Charlie's Angels full throttle. And that, that was the correct answer. Gets the two points. Before I throw it to Rachel, because I know I'm sure you, you have an opinion on this. Frank. Yeah. Just if it stopped there. You know, we just did this. We just went down this road not too long ago with top 10 uh, match um, and the Patriots. If it stopped right there, would you be okay with that? If, if, what's your ultimate question? If, if it, it just, if 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 you know he said you know Christian said be more specific yeah Dagnino Bobby Gucci says full, Charlie's Angels full throttle they uh-huh. award him the points are you okay with that no no because it's exactly the reasoning he gave to then justify a new question was he was leading them on so it, it's <laughs> I just I could not believe we were doing this again and I messaged Christian I was just like oh Christian. <laughs> like what? I mean, you just can't catch a break these past couple of weeks, but you know it, it's and he was exactly correct in, in saying that he was leading him on because there is Charlie's Angels and there's Charlie Angels full throttle. Um, and if I saw Dagnio comment on one of the posts, and I'm just curious uh, if if you knew the answer, why didn't you just say Charlie's Angels full throttle to begin with and not have any of this mess? Because clearly you didn't know it was full throttle, and so I understand. You're trying to be a little conniving and get the points, and you're competitive and all that. And I'm not really upset about that. I just, again, I'm upset about or disappointed in the decision, the final decision. Uh, I don't blame players for trying to get get a decision to go their way. It's up to the, the, the decision makers to not listen to any of that and do what's right for the game and not be swayed by someone, a player saying anything. They can say all they want. I don't care. But when it comes down to the actual decision, you have to block everything out and make the right decision. And I don't, you know, this wasn't exactly the same case as the respin, but it was pretty close. And I think we got to be, and I'm sure 
Christian knows this and everybody else who's at the desk knows they got to be more careful uh, with clarifying statements and questions, asking competitors to have clarifying statements and questions or answers. Because um, there, there has... There has been something like this in the past. I can't, I couldn't quite find it, but I know, I feel like there at least was one instance where this has come up before, and it wasn't as blatant, I think. That's why it wasn't a huge deal. But this is obviously a huge deal right after everything with the Patriots in top 10. So, uh, But it, it died down fairly quickly, I think, <laughs> in, the, in the community. At least from what we saw. Uh, uh, but here's the thing. And, and Rachel, I definitely obviously want to get your, your thoughts on this. I don't know if I was all that mad at it. And, I, and I'll tell you why. With just him answering Charlie's Angels and then Christian asking to be more specific. And I'll tell you why. I've seen game shows before, you know, like Family Feud, where he'll, you know, they'll say something, you know, and then Steve Harvey will turn to the off camera and he'll say, yeah, we can't accept that. We need you to be more specific. I've seen that before in a lot of game shows. I know this is a little different. It could be construed as Christian leading the witness, if you will, if we're talking about a courtroom setting. But Charlie's Angels by itself may not be – it's it's just like saying, you know, we're talking about Indiana Jones. If he just answered Indiana Jones, right? I mean, technically he's right. It is an Indiana Jones movie. T- Charlie's Angels is technically correct, and he's asking him to be more specific. Yeah, Dagnino but- could have theor- – well, hold on, Frank. D- Dagnino could have th- theoretically been like, what do you mean? Charlie's Angels. That's as specific as I can get. It was contingent on him knowing full throttle. I, I don't like, saying, I'm, I don't I'm, like your, I'm not, your Indiana I, Jones a, example is a bad one because every movie has a okay, subtitle. Okay, maybe it's a bad one. So that's that. Okay, so that's my thing too. I, I've, I've talked about this with people, and I said it would be a less egregious leading him on if it was he said Die Hard, and he said be more specific, because at least there's four other possibilities given. Be more specific about the problem with Charlie's Angels is. It's a dead giveaway. There's only one other choice, yeah. full throttle. Yeah. And if the first one didn't have a subtitle. So he answered Charlie's Angels. Bruce Willis is not in, and Demi Moore are not in Charlie's Angels. Like that, that was Clark's thing. She was like, just full stop, wrong. Yeah. And then the, the, the thing for the leading, like, like Christian put it into words. Like that's what we were arguing and then Christian articulated it better than we were arguing. <laughs> so he actually said, and we were like, yes, you did. You gave him the answer. Now, I understand Brad's point of if he didn't know the subtitle full throttle, then it wouldn't be giving away. But he is giving it away that it's only one other possible answer because there's only one other Charlie's Angels movie. So it would be different if he said, be more specific and there were more choices to be specific about other film franchises. You know, even in the Indiana Jones one does sort of fall into that. But in this particular instance, there, as soon as he said that, there's only one other possible mm-hmm. movie that it could be. And, um, and so that was our problem with it. And then, of course, the, the, the um, icing uh, on the cake is uh, somehow they get a, a new question. It's just, it's just, uh, it's just, it's well, just wrong. The, yeah, it is. Yeah. This was the point where well, okay, where so, Clark and I got nervous. Honestly, this was the point we got nervous. I mean, really, really quickly, I just want to say I do not want to be the, on the opposite end of Clark Wolf when uh, <laughs> I did not want oh, to be Christian. And, hell oh, no! Who <laughs> knew? Who knew? Not, yeah, not for me. Yeah, she was very uh, aggressive in her challenge, but the challenge ended up, you know, being being a correct thing to challenge. I guess so. Let me ask you this, Rachel. I'm thinking now of other movies. So, like, G.I. Joe, we have, t- we have two, right? We have G.I. Joe, Rise of the Cobra, G.I. Joe, Retaliation. Would that, so if he just said G.I. Joe to that and Christian said be more specific, would, that would have been okay. That would have been more okay. I'm still, I still just don't necessarily think Christian should be saying anything to that effect. That the Schmodown has not set a precedent to ask for that. I, I do recall, Frank, there, there was some thing like this in the past, but I don't think it was a movie title. I think it yeah, might have been sure. like, what what did so-and-so do for a living or, you know, and they had to be more specific. That I understand. But in terms of a movie title, you know the movie title or you don't. Yeah. And G.I. Joe is, be more specific, at least there's two subtitles. Because G.I. Joe's an incorrect answer because the full yeah. title of the movie is one or the other. You have to answer one of them. I mean, I suppose you could say G.I. Joe one or two and then we would open a whole other can of worms. But it's that at least would be more okay in this instance that there, there literally was no other he, by saying that he gave away the fact that it 
was Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. Right. When, you, when you're specifically talking about a movie title, it's anything you ask after, like, uh, can you clarify? You're basically telling them right there and then that that's the wrong answer. There's no way around it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's, but yeah. Well, and when you go on to so, other okay. examples, I don't know it gets a little more uh, dicey. And, and I and I want to ask about the the new question here and, and what your thoughts were on that, Rachel. But last thing though, but what if it's like a movie like and and then we're doing too many what ifs now. I know, but <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. like Star Wars. Star, the first Star Wars movie was retroactively titled A New Hope, right? So if he just said star, if the question was something to the effect of you know what was the first Star Wars movie or what Star Wars movie was released in 1977, and he says Star Wars, is that now not correct? That's a harder one because at one point in time, that would have been the right answer. It's not now, but you could argue that in 19, you know, in the 1980s, it was the, the, the fact. So there's, uh, there's evidence to argue on both sides. So I do think this is a case-by-case -case basis. Case like, yeah. I, yeah. I, you know, and, and, and look, all I can really speak upon is this circumstance that we lived through. And, and yeah. it's my firm <laughs> belief that that was, you know, the, the, the wrong call. He, he gave an answer. It was wrong. So the the, the uh, new question, though, you you didn't like this ruling. You thought it should have just been wrong. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 it really does come down to when you get something wrong, you're not supposed to get the points or a second chance at the points. And and I'm not entirely sure. I think Christian sort of he made a comment that made me think that he thought the original question was the problem or how he read it. And yeah. that wasn't our argument. That question, if you read that question, the question is perfectly well written. It's perfectly fine. Um, but, you know, but Christian's been through a lot lately. And he had <laughs> the fiasco last time and then another one in this time. And, you know, and 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 God bless him, he, he wanted to do what he thought was the most fair thing in the moment, even though we were all yelling at him, he got it wrong. So... Um, hopefully, and, and, and he will, he, he has already promised, um, with an interview with, uh, you guys, uh, or sorry, with take three that, you know, yeah. that the, the bottom line, um, more judges will be involved and they are going to be stricter about the rules. The rules are set in place for reasons. Um, and, and the, the whole league would benefit with, you know, more consistency on that side of things. And I know he's committed to doing Speaking, that. speaking of more judges, I gotta believe Mark and Draco had to be just going berserk over this decision uh everybody was <laughs> okay well because i know mark and draco he, he 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 generally generally chimes in i think when he can or or gives his input on decisions like this uh there, there, were, there were there were multiple people up oh, at the table i can only imagine i can only <laughs> see now that's the decision pegging you know, i want that part i want to see behind the scenes but <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, so they end up getting a new uh, new question, and I, it was something to the effect of, uh, "In what Cameron Diaz movie was the character Stanley Ipkiss or so, yeah. something like that?" Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and the answer was the mask, of course. Um, so they do get the points after all, even after the challenge. A new question is asked; they get the points. Now they're within what? They're within one point. Yeah, they're within one. And then uh, we see Ken Napsok go, and he gets uh, action adventure movies, gets the three points. And, and uh, one of now, the best pulls of this season, if oh, not wow. any season. Oh, he's yes. Had a couple was, times already this year. He's he been pulling is stuff. A, I mean, it, I, I despise him for what he did for me. But <laughs> as a trivia player, he is a better trivia player than people give him credit for. And what he did there is what actually I was doing in my head, too. I didn't, I've never heard of Carlos Gallardo. I just thought in my head, okay, what movies stars in a, a, a hispanic role and like you, you just start going through it in a logic way and you kind of get to that as a guess because okay antonio banderas did it in the sequel but oh wait i knew a different guy that i don't remember the name of played it in the first one yeah. this is a movie people have heard of like you do that and you get there and it is exactly what ken did in that moment use the jte rule perfectly played it up as the ham that he is and and then and spit it out and everybody just went holy shit <laughs> and it, it, yeah it's... he's done it before he is a, he can pull answers he can pull them it, it was a phenomenal it was a phenomenal pull uh and th so they, they get the point and then it, it goes to uh spielberg movies um which uh, uh clark wolf answered first got the two points and then uh you went with 
another great pull, and then Matthew yeah. McConaughey. When you heard Matthew McConaughey, what, were, were you feeling? How are you feeling about that? Because you can either you can either go with like you know uh, uh, a, a, a recent McConaughey movie like that he appeared in like Wolf of Wall Street, like the the new era of Matthew McConaughey, or like Dallas Buyers Club Matthew McConaughey, or you can go with like Surfer Dude. You know, you never know what can come up. There, there aren't a lot of actor or actress wheel slices that I feel overly confident with because most of them have such vast filmographies. And it's different than when you go with a genre because we all tend to like certain genres or, or, or over others. So, you know, I'm always going to pick dramas. I'm always going to pick sci-fi fantasy. And I'm always going to stay far away from action or horror. Um, with actors, yeah, I've seen a ton of Matthew McConaughey movies that I love. Um, he's also in a lot of terrible movies <laughs> yes, and yeah. movies that I, I deliberately skipped because I was like, I'm not watching fool's gold. Why would I do that to myself? Like, so, so when I get actors a lot of the time in, in round three, I kind of have to steal myself and go, this could go either way. And luckily in this instance, um, a, mud is a, a, a fantastic movie. It's one of my favorite movies in the last five to 10 years. Um, and I absolutely adored his role in it. And also it was the role that Ty Sheridan that launched his career. So that was an easy question for me, but that could also easily have been a question from how to lose a guy in 10 days in which I would oh, have been yeah. like, Ugh. yeah. <laughs> I yeah. How do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Frank, what did you think? Frank, we saw Spielberg Clark gets it. And then McConaughey films after, let me ask you this. Actually, let me just go back a little bit. After, uh, yeah, yeah, after the, uh, but after the, the Ipkiss question, the Stanley Ipkiss question, now they're within one, and then we see uh, Action Adventure with Ken, and he makes that great pull. What were you thinking, Frank? Did you think, wait a minute, could they actually do this? Could the Lions in actually do this? No, because I knew I'll they... I'll be honest, I thought of it for a second. For I'm like, wait, wait a minute. They got that two-pointer, then they got the three-pointer. There's a possibility here that Lions didn't. Because I was one of the fans that thought TKO or KO. Well, I was I was I was pretty impressed by Ken after that. But I knew that as long as the two pointer for the Shirebolts was answered correctly, then um, I'm pretty confident that Lions then is going to have to answer that five pointer to 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 win it. But when Clark was taking a little longer on the that. E.T. question, Spielberg category. Uh, I was getting a little worried. I was getting a little worried. I was like, oh, no. Come on, guys. <laughs> and uh, luckily she got it. And then, obviously, Rachel got her question right. So, And then Lions and had to answer the five to try and extend the game. but that, And that didn't happen. So uh, I, I don't ever really – I don't think I was ever really that that worried because um, – I just didn't think a Lions End could answer a five point question. That, that's just gonna be hard. And I, I, I guess it's I had more confidence in Shirel's answering a five pointer than I did the Lions Den. If it, yeah. that was gonna be the deciding factor, um, that's that, that's pretty much how I was looking at it. Yeah, you know, and, and, and I'm right there with you. I did think though for a second, Rachel, I was like, is this gonna be the you know the plot from the Longest Yard where you know the guards go in for the tune up game against the cons. <laughs> And, you know, they're just going to walk the floor with them. And then the cons start kicking butt for a minute. I was like, no, I cannot see this movie again. Uh, but uh, going in, when, when you saw their, what was their five-point question? I can't remember. Uh, it was about the movie Frank, who plays yeah. the, the, the female lead in the movie. Yeah, um, yeah. Can I just say, what question writer, because there's more than just Skaliski now, so I can't yeah. just yell at him, but somebody <laughs> loves the movie Frank because it's been coming up. A lot, <laughs> um, yeah. but but that was a that was a. I don't like anything a, to do with Frank. Sorry, thank you. Thank, thanks. <laughs> all right, all right. But you were saying all right. <laughs> yeah, um, but that seemed like a a, a, a genuine five pointer. So it's a not a, a well known yeah. movie. It's not the asking about either of the two leads. It was the third lead in it and whatnot. Um, but. Uh, but I'll tell you that that I, I can't speak for Clark, but I was worried at that point because not necessarily that oh, I was worried that I felt like all the all the luck elements were going completely against us at that point. That, that it yeah. happened in round two, yeah. and then Dance, the whole and the, the and, challenge, and yeah. then the the challenge, and and not oh, the, like they shouldn't have got the two points, and then he got an easy second question, and then Ken pulls this thing out of nowhere, and and Clark 
worked her way to that D Wallace answer. Thank God. I'm so proud that, that she pulled it because that's so hard to do a lot of times. But, um, but I, I, I was thinking more on the lo- along the lines of like, man, all the, the outside of my control factors are going their yeah. way. Is this actually going to go all the way <laughs> their way? Um, so I was, I was sweating. And then to hear Matthew McConaughey, and I was, I was just like, you know, th- th- we, I might not get this. There's a yeah. very good chance I don't get this. So you just never know. No, you, you, you never know. But y'all pull it out. 25 to 22, the Shire Wolves successful in their debut, like a lot of us thought that they would be. Um, you, you seem very confident going into your post match interview. Uh, what? What? I, before we talk about uh, Friday's match, what? What? Do you, what is next for the Shire Wolves? Obviously, you're going to eye those those tag titles or uh, those team titles rather. Um, do you have any opponents in mind? Is there anyone you'd like to face next? It's it's. Uh, it's very. It's not about individuals for us at this point. It's we play whoever gets put in front of us. Is is really our mentality. Um, I know that that maybe you know goes against some of the story driven stuff. So I'm sure Christian will pick perfectly. <laughs> you know all, all, all the story stuff. I leave in his hands for 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 that. Yeah. But Clark and I, you know, from the very first lunch that we had together when we talked about coming together, we said. You know, we're going to if when we announce this, everybody's going to put all that pressure on us, and everybody's going to say they have to win, and, 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 and you know, to be the, the first women to do it, and, and to and to go against the big guns, and to to take down the Patriots because nobody can seem to take down the Patriots. Like all of that, we knew that pressure was coming, and the very last thing we wanted to do was to in any way make it seem like we don't earn our way to that the top so yeah. that means playing i know that, that people have been talking about emma's number one contender um prize and we've talked to her about it and, and we don't know for sure what she's going to do yet and it's still a possibility for us of course it is for anybody in our faction but clark and i are determined to play so whoever christian puts in front of us next is who we will play and and you know and then the next and the next and hopefully you know after you know three or four wins um, we will have proven that we deserve the title shot that everybody seems to think we should have. <laughs> and, uh, you know, real quick, too, I know a lot of people are saying that you shouldn't have started up against Lions and you should start up against, you know, more established teams uh, that are better, um, I guess you could say, like, um, uh, like, uh, I don't know. I can't even think of a team off the top of my head right now. Now that I'm on the spot, but what I what I'm trying to say is, you guys were O and O going up against another team that's O and O. You're not going to go up against a team that has five wins and you guys have zero leads. And I think people, um, some fans out there in the community, kind of have to figure that out. That you're going to end up playing another maybe one and one team or a one and O team now. Um, you're not going to go right to the top. You're not going to play top that or top ten or action even. Um, they have five wins. You know, you guys have just have your first, so it's not. Everyone gets that you guys have the skill, um, and it's not putting skill versus skill. It's team record versus team record, and then that's where I guess then the skill comes into play once you have an established record, the proven that you've gotten there. So I just think because I've seen some comments out there about that, and I just kind of wanted to address that real quick. Yeah, I feel the same way. Like, I do understand their arguments in the sense that, you know, compared to other new teams, say World's Finest, you know, we do have matches under our belts. We do have experience, but we don't together. Yeah. And, like, there's, that is not to be underestimated. And it was the thing, even more than getting questions right, this match was about seeing if we really did balance each other out in the way that we did on paper. Because... Uh, we just didn't want to go down the same road that Wolves of Steel did in that they were this anointed team before they even played and then they lost their first match out of the gate. And it's like some fans never forgave them for that. Yeah. And yeah. that's really sad because they were a dominant team and we've proven time and again in every one of our leagues that the best, most knowledgeable players do not necessarily win. The game is subject to so many things that that's that's what makes it interesting that's what yeah. it makes it fun that's what makes it enjoyable all of that stuff so my my point being you know yes we have a little more experience than the other newbie teams but we're still a newbie team and we have to play in that pool before we 
earn the shots against any of the big guys. Like it's, it, it seems matter of fact to me, but uh, I'm happy that you brought it up, Frank, and, and that your your um, your explanation hopefully, uh, hopefully. <laughs> gets hopefully. through to some of them. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> That's a big ask there, right there. That's a big ask. <laughs> That's I'm <okay>. just saying. <laughs> well, hey, uh, wait, I-, I can't wait to see what's going to happen next with the Shire Wolves. But I wanted to talk about, let's talk about this Friday match a little bit. You know, the commish, or the so-called commish, or the sort of commish, uh, Christian Harloff, he-, he talked a second ago when he made his little brief appearance here, his cameo appearance about, uh, their, you know, storylines aren't as heavy right now because we're introducing a lot more talent. Um, th- this time we saw debuts. Uh, of, of two new players, Machado, Irwin, and um, what, what overall, Rachel, are you excited? Because you you made your debut, obviously, your rookie of the year last year. Are you excited to see new people entering the Schmodown? At one hundred percent. Like I, I know that you know some fans have have missed some of their favorite competitors, and I completely understand that. And I think we're headed into a season where the balance will be. A little better between you know new faces and familiar faces and 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 more emphasis are, are getting us back to some of the stories and and the heels and the faces and all the aspects that people have come to love with the showdown. But as the newbie from last year, you know I I have to be excited that there are newbies this year because yeah. the it, it would get stagnant if it was the same people over and over. And and I think fans need to give a lot of these new players uh, a chance and you know, from their ranks will be the next Bibiani's and, and the next, you know, Clark Wolf's and, and everything else. So, you know, we should be welcoming them. We should be paying attention, very close attention to them. Um, I think there've been some really great play so far. Uh, maybe some not so great play, but some great characters. Like there's, yeah. it, there's all of these aspects are important to this. And of all the new faces, I think both Irwin and Machado showed that, yeah, there are some newbies who know their movies, and uh, and the rest of us are are paying very close attention. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I thought uh, Irwin really made made a big uh, bit, made a big mark in his debut match. Don't you agree, Frank? Absolutely, and it's one of the best debuts in Schmodown history. He missed just oh, one, wow. one yeah. missed just one question, uh, in which um, he was pretty close. You know, so he could have had a perfect first round. Yeah, pre- it was the priest, priest and the monk. monk. Yeah, so uh, he could have been one of the few to debut and have a perfect first round. Uh, yeah, he and Christian, you know, has been has been talking about him here and there that he's gonna be really dangerous. So I'm curious, Rachel, on your thoughts uh, overall. Did, what did you know about Ethan Irwin uh, before his match uh, dropped on Friday? Christian um, enjoys teasing me, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> So I, he, every once in a while, he'll he'll come up to me and he'll say something about you new know, competitors or whatnot. And and his phrase would be, and and I, I'm not saying this to like pat myself on the back, but he would say, "I'm gonna find the next you." Mm-hmm. And then one day he came in and said, "I found the next you, <laughs> Ethan Irwin. This guy knows his stuff." Um, and it had been mostly kind of like a scheduling thing. I mean, he's. Uh, an EVP, it's yeah. sort of predictors. <laughs> this guy has a, yeah. a very um, top of the line career and is very busy and travels a lot and everything else. Um, but he's like Bibiani and McWeeny in that he's been around films for so long and they've been part of his life and he's got a great memory. And um, and I was like, okay, okay. And then I was in the audience with that match. And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yes, I, I think that he is an absolute contender. I think that um, if he is able to be around uh, a lot, um, that, that he is absolutely somebody to watch and, and is coming. And I like to sort of understated bravado. He just, like, called out a whole bunch of names. Oh. And, and he's, like, he's, yeah. he's not, like, he's not bragging the way the heels do. But it was very sort of matter of fact, and I was mm-hmm. just like, "Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, your trivia knowledge spoke for itself, so that's yeah. clear." Um, and and I have to say, I don't want Yolanda to get lost in the the shuffle yeah. here because she, if she'd played up against anybody else, any of the other newbies in, in the league, I feel like that would have been a match that went all the way to the five pointer. She got right. five points in round one. You know, she had to multiple choice her way through round two, but I, I've done it and I've still mm-hmm. won matches. So it's entirely possible. Yeah. Um, you know, she just kind of in her inaugural match went up against um, 
someone who looks to be like a new juggernaut and right. uh, and and whatnot. But she said she wants to be back, and I, as I am a huge fan of her writing, so I was ecstatic that she joined the league in the first place. Um, and and yeah, and 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 I'm I might be a little scared of Ethan, to be honest. Yeah, uh, real quick. Well, on, well, well go, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, Frank. on Yolanda, um, it's hard to. Like you said, she went up against Ethan Root, had just a phenomenal debut. And, yeah, we don't want that to get lost because she had a pretty good debut, and it gets overshadowed by Ethan Irwin. Um, I'm just – I don't know how you are, Rachel, or Brad as well. Um, I don't pass – I've I've tried to stop doing this personally, passing judgment on players given just one match because it's a, it's a brand-new environment. You could be – you know, not everyone's gonna come out swinging like Ethan Irwin or William Bibiani and nail all yeah. these questions correct. And sometimes you're just gonna have uh, some slow starts and that that propel into um, really great careers in the Schmodown. Um, do you think, Rachel, that, that that's what might be happening with other fans in the community? They're just saying Yolanda didn't have a great match. She got TKO'd. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on new players debuting? Yeah, um, I think everybody deserves a chance. And, and you know, I, I really wish yeah. some of the fans would, you know, get on board with that because it has to grow. It has to, to com- continue to evolve. And, and like I said, it would be stagnant and boring if the same people played over and over again. It just would. They, I think some fans don't think that, but if it happened, they'd get bored by it. And, you know, with, I, I mean, and, and, I am walking example of the lights affect you. The pressure affects you. Being in front of the camera affects you. Like, believe me, you know what we all do in our free time? We hang out, go to movies, and talk movie trivia to each other. Like, it's ridiculous how much (laughs) we just talk about movies. And clearly, everybody that plays in the league, even players that, you know, are 500 in their records or don't have the best records, no movies. But it's... Every circumstance, every match is different. And I feel like it is incredibly important to not judge you on the first match because it's circumstantial. Like, Mm -hmm. it's not just wins and losses. It's not just TKOs or KOs. It's how you play the game. And, you know, some fans know that and, and they pay attention to the details of how they play. And others don't. Like, I, you know, I, I, I'm supposed to stay away from the comments. I get yelled at when I don't, but I, I do read them sometimes. So hard. It's really hard, and um, and there are so many amazing ones, and and they you know uplift me and are and are amazing, and and I get such joy out of being. Um, I got a tweet from a woman who said that I sent me a picture of her six-year-old daughter cheering for me in a match. Yeah. That's everything for me. Yeah. That yeah, that is awesome. why I'm doing this, you know. Um, but yeah. then there are the people that like, you know, no matter what Clark and I do together as the Shire Wolves, are determined to tear us down, to dislike us. And so in this particular match, you know, the fact that we didn't KO or TKO them <laughs> means we're not a top team. Yeah. Means yeah. we're not going to be able to hang. Means we're not good. We're overrated. All this stuff. And I just... And I have to tell myself that, that that doesn't matter, that that is the minority, and that even if we did TKO them, they would comp- be complaining we didn't KO them. Like, there's nothing right. I can yeah. do about yeah. them. Yeah. And so that's, those are the people that I just have to shove aside. And, you know, I, I've, I've had a long conversation with Yolanda, and I said, you are so welcome in this league. We want you here. We love you. She said she felt so beloved here uh, at the studio, and I just hope that enough fans – you know, embrace her it, because she is an incredibly smart player and I have no doubt that she can rack up wins. I mean, compare how I played against my, Nick Scarpino in my original match. I played about the same that she did. We just went yeah. into the third round and he wasn't an Ethan Irwin. If I had played an Ethan Irwin in my debut match, yeah. the same thing would have happened to me. Mm-hmm. But people don't equate that because they're just like, well, you won. And it's, there, there's, yeah. it's more like yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think I think with Yolanda was, and it wasn't even the fact that she didn't know, you know, it, like her trivia game wasn't there. I think it was more of a game aspect. I think that she thought, oh, Tom Cruise, I can answer Tom Cruise movies. Tom Cruise isn't bad. And I think maybe she would have benefited from a re- uh, from another spin right there. Maybe landed on something more favorable. You, you never know with these things. But uh, I, I love both of these guys. I, I'm with you though about Irwin. Man, this guy, he's looking real good. 
you know, he's looking real <laughs> jacked. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like what he's bringing to the table. Uh, but we'll, we'll see what we'll see what happens uh, down the road with both of these competitors. I hope that we see both of them back here in the Schmodown. I'm sure that we will uh, sooner rather than later. But Rachel, I mean, it's been such a pleasure to have you on with us this evening. Your insight to the game is like no one else. Your play got, is on such another level. Go ahead, I got, Frank. I got one more You're question. You're interrupting my wrap-up, but I know, go ahead. I know, but I wanted to get this in real quick because you kind of t- touched on it, Rachel, uh, a little bit. Um, can you speak to the competitiveness within the, the competitor community? Because I've been, I've yeah. been fortunate enough to be around some of you people uh, when I've gone out and visit, and I can see just how competitive – you are. It, it it actually surprises me how competitive you really get. I mean, speaking of John Roca, and John Roca, he's just, yes, he's like the easiest example I can point to. But so many other players, like Ben Bateman or yourself or Sam Levine, I mean, are just so ingrained and competitive. It, it's just not you know. You see the fans, and they're very invested. Um, I, I there's no way for me to even express or describe how invested I feel like you guys are. I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's kind of, it's awesome to see that. It really is because it's not just, you know, a bunch of uh, weirdos on Facebook and a Facebook group being super hyped about a trivia show. It's no, the people who actually play are just the same. Can you talk about what it's like, that competitiveness? And it, did it surprise you just how competitive it's been? Absolutely. For me, it was just a period of coming out of my shell and being comfortable around these people and being comfortable in front of the lights. But like um, Christian always says, he's like, your problem has never been your general confidence in your knowledge. I know the number of movies I've seen in my lifetime. I know the things that I know, and I know that it's pretty broad. And I know that I I bring that to the table. Um, It's just, you know, the game and the lights and the cameras and the stories and the acting and, and the pressure from outside of that, you know, all of that is, is are factors that I've had to learn to deal with. But those don't exist when we're all at, in the conference room at Collider. And so when we're all standing around and watching on the monitor a match, oh, you better believe we're all there. You know that one? Yeah, I know that one. You know that one? I bet you don't know this. Like, all the time. All the time. And it is inevitable that, you know, I I was, um, I'm I'm sure, a little peek behind the curtain. A lot of times we shoot multiple matches on one day because it's using the studio and and people are are in storylines together and things like that, so it's convenient to do that. Um, I hate going last. So, like, if they... We're shooting three matches, and I'm sitting in there in the audience, and I'm watching two other matches ahead of time before mine goes up. I guarantee you I'm getting perfect first rounds almost every time. And it's because I'm sitting there, and I'm not actually playing. And then I'm going, <laughs> well, karma's going to run out because I'm going to get up there, and it's going to be my turn. And all the questions I knew have already been asked today. So yeah. like, there's no way I'm going to get it. So we're in the audience, and we, we promise Christian we won't say the answers out loud anymore. So we all have our phones out. And yes. they'll ask the first question, and we'll all type really, really fast, and then show each other our phones. Like, I got this one. Did you get this one? Seriously, we we're absolute. We are a huge family, but we are a freaking competitive family. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I think I saw uh, Sam Levine. He's got one where it kind of shows up on his phone, and it flat the answer flashes. He flashes it to the audience. Yeah, uh, I, I was surprised with my first visit down there to see how competitive everyone was, but I love it. It makes me love it even more. Uh, you know, it's just, it, it's funny, even though, because I... We're, a lot of us, most of us, I was just going to say, most of us are incredibly invested in it. And like, and that's what makes it amazing, but also makes it hard sometimes too. Like I said, like there are times where I stress myself out so much because I care so much. And it's like, eh, you got to find a better balance here with it. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, also supposed to be a lot of fun. Right. But I promise you, I care a lot and I do put in a ton of effort and I do study as much as my busy life allows me to. Um, and and Roca does and Brianne does and Ben Bateman, oh my God, he's like a walking encyclopedia these days. He comes <laughs> in and he'll be like, he just wants to show off the, the, the latest things that he's memorized, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But that's because we're all determined to, you know, present our best selves in this format 
and we're all representing different aspects, whether it's, you know, me for female players or, or Roca for, for Hispanic players or, or for, for those of us that are older or are like, it's not just about the young kids and for the young kids, it's like, yeah, you old people, we're coming and taking <laughs> over. Like yeah. the, from whatever aspect or whatever point of view we're all coming from, you know, it, it's important to us all. Like I hope the fans never doubt that it's important to us and that, you know, we really are doing the best we can. Um, and, it, and it's not always pretty, but, you know, we're giving it our all. Well, it's definitely awesome to see your passion, Rachel. I mean, it definitely comes through uh, when, when you're talking about the schmodown. And, and competitiveness is, is good, I think, in anything. I mean, you know, I come from the world of wrestling, and even in a predetermined, choreographed, fake sport, <laughs> people are competitive behind the scenes. Uh, it just, it's just in nature. It's, you know, it's natural. So, uh, But, hey, before we go, uh, Chris Clark, you're on the boards here. You're on the ones and twos. Chris Clark, who, what do we have coming up next week? What matches do we have coming up next week? Do you know off t- offhand? I already know them. So Frank. <laughs> Wait, next week, next week is the live stuff. The mm-hmm. uh, Wild Berries versus yeah. uh, Real Rejects and uh, John Roca versus JTE. Those oh. are going to be ridiculously <laughs> rocking, really rocking, yo. Uh, I'm I'm looking for them to be really rocking, yo. Rachel, anything <laughs> that you want to plug uh, before we get you out of here? Anything you have coming up? Anything you want the people to know about? Uh, no, I'm I, I'm. I like a lot of these guys. I don't have my own podcast or shows. I'm a behind the scenes person in my career. So um, I usually leave it at that. But I am somebody that does like to, um, you know, interact on social media. So like I'm on Twitter and Instagram. So please feel free to reach out at Rachel J. Cushing um, and, you know, and support Collider and Christian and the Schmodown and, and all of that is as much as you guys can to the patrons, like even the one that put dance movies on my wheel. Um, thank you. We appreciate it. <laughs> and, um, and yeah. You know, <laughs> Uh, Frank, Frank, why don't you let people know where they can find you? Yeah, Twitter, Instagram at FrankieJ29. And that's about, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Well, what a, what, <laughs> love that pitch there. Uh, Chris Clark. <laughs> Chris Clark. <laughs> what do you got to plug, man? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Chris Clark8788. Those numbers mean nothing. You can find me every Wednesday on Take Three Productions hosting Suddenly Soundtracks, where we go through a movie musical song by song and judge a movie solely based on the soundtrack it provides. And I cannot wait for our Walk the Line episode to come out, Chris Clark. Oh, it's going to be phenomenal. Uh, Rachel Cushing seems like she might want to be a guest on that show in the future. Uh, hey, thank <laughs> you so much. are working on our yeah. episode. Yeah. So I will yeah. do an episode with okay. yeah. Clark. Okay. okay, I'm looking forward to it. Well, Rachel, thank you so much again. You can follow me at Brad Gill on all social media. Make sure you follow the Schmo- uh, Schmodown Rundown at SchmodownRD on Twitter and Schmodown Rundown on Instagram. Uh, for Frank Janish, Chris Clark on the boards, and our guest, Rachel Cushing, we will see you all next week.